Balakorik Generating Station is a mill peat burning station. The station is situated in North Mayo, approximately 20 miles from Balana and 8 miles from Bangararis. The purpose of this video is to explain how the mill peat is harvested by Bordnamona, transported to the station and burned in the boiler to produce electricity which is then fed into the national grid. Work on building the station commenced in May 1958. The first boiler turbine unit started producing electricity in November 1962 and the second unit in January 1963. The plant consists of two 20 megawatt turbines driven by steam from two boilers. There are just over 100 people employed in Bellacoric Generating Station. The station is managed by a station manager assisted by a deputy. The station generates electricity continuously on a 24 hour basis. It is operated by operation staff who work three on a rotor basis. There are 51 operation staff and the same number of maintenance staff with a diversity of skills who maintain the generating plant and associated buildings. There is also a canteen staff and a clerical admin staff. Adjacent to the station is the Owenini River, famous for its salmon fishing. Another local landmark is the Musical Bridge. The station consumes approximately 350,000 tonnes of mill peat, which generates 200,000 megawatts per annum. It operates at its optimum efficiency when it is supplied with mill peat at 55% moisture. Come on in with us and we will try and explain how electricity is generated. First, let us give you a general idea of how the combustion process takes place. To do this, we would like you to look at the sketch. The water, the fuel is mixed with hot gases drawn from the top of the boiler. This mixture is fed into the mill. The mill forces the fuel into the boiler where the combustion takes place. The gases produced are drawn out the back pass of the boiler by a fan. On their way out, their temperature is reduced and the fine particles of ash and grit are removed by the grit extractor. The clean gases are passed through the fan up the stack and dispersed into the atmosphere. The water which has been changed into steam in the boiler is piped across to the steam turbine. To facilitate expansion, the boiler is designed to hang from the roof. Water, fuel and air are required to get the boiler fully operational. Let us first look at the filling of the boiler with water and where that water comes from. Water is supplied to the station from the Owenini River. It is filtered by this rotating screen on its way into the pump house from where it is pumped up to the station. When it reaches the station it is passed through this water treatment plant. The water from this plant is chemically pure and ready for use in the boiler. The pure water is pumped into the boiler by the boiler feed pump. On its way to the boiler, it passes through feed heaters and an economizer, where its temperature is raised to 220 degrees. Raising the temperature of the water in this way increases the efficiency of the boiler. Having filled the boiler with water, we can now start the combustion process, so we must supply the boiler with fuel. Bordnamona provide us with fuel in the form of milled peat. 
they have been operating out of their own any works here since the early 1950s. The developed areas of the bog are divided into fields to facilitate drainage. During the summer, Bordnemona start, start the harvesting process. This involves breaking up the top layer of bog to a depth of a half an inch. This is done with a light pin miller and each field is given two runs. Before the drying has taken place, each field is given two runs with the harrow. Harrowing turns the mill piece and assists the drying process. When the moisture content of the peat is 40%, it is ridged with a double ridger which collects the layer of peat and leaves it in a ridge down the centre of the field. A type 7 harvester is then used to collect the ridge peat from several fields and place it in a long pile. Go. This is then covered in plastic until it is required for use in the generating station. This is the traditional Piku system. Go. When the piece is required, temporary tracks are laid to the pile. In recent years, a new Haku system has been implemented. The harvesting is similar, but instead of collecting the peat into a long pile, the ridge peat is lifted and loaded into side-tipping Haku trailers. The trailers deliver the peat to the Haku pile. A bulldozer is used to shape the pile and make way for the trailers to travel. The piece is loaded into wagons for delivery to the station. Ten to twelve wagons make up a rake and they are drawn by a diesel driven locomotive.
our first contact with the fuel is here in the tippler. The loco parks the rake at the entrance to the tippler. From now on the wagons will be moved by the pulling in or pulling out chains which are electrically driven. The pulling in chain moves the first wagon into the rotating part of the tippler. Because of the special coupling chain the wagon can be turned through 360 degrees while still coupled and, an eight, and the 8 to 10 tons of peat which the wagon holds are deposited in the tippler pit. We are also supplied by truck with fuel from a bog development in Bangararis. These trucks carry 20 to 25 tonnes of fuel. The round trip takes one hour. Using a series of belts, the fuel is conveyed into the station. This is the main rising belt. It carries the fuel from ground level to the top of the station. As the fuel travels on the belt, it is weighed by the belt wear. When the fuel reaches the bunker, it drops onto the shuttle belt, which moves over the bunker cells, filling them as required. Each bunker, when filled, holds approximately 400 tonnes of fuel. This quantity of fuel is sufficient to maintain the boiler in full production for around 8 hours. The bunker is divided into 4 cells. Each cell supplies fuel to a separate feeder which feeds the fuel into its associated mill.